Elder Rochelle Wilson Goggins, and I'm a member of Greater Faith Worship Center located at 120 Safford Street in Hyde Park, Massachusetts. Hey, listen, in this ever-changing times that we're living in, the one thing that has not changed is God's Word. Get ready for a powerful Word of God from our founder and pastor, Apostle Frederick J. Wilson. Stay tuned. And grace and peace be multiplied unto you from God the Father and uh, from the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank God for this Sunday morning. And those who are viewing me and hearing my voice, uh, I am the pastor of the Greater Faith Worship Center campus at 120 Satford Street in Hyde Park, Massachusetts. God has a word for us this morning and it's found in the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and just really verses 1 and 2. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. We have a word for you, a message that is entitled, An Unshakable Church in a Unshakable Times. An Unshakable Church in Shakable times. The Apostle Paul writes this epistle to the church at Thessalonica. First to note, notice it's not a gospel, but a letter. To fully understand its content, content we, you need to read the whole entire epistle, which consists of three chapters. The church there consisted of new converts in Christ, new converts in Christ, who were partially instructed in the Christian faith. First to note, they had the faith to believe. For God, initially for salvation, two important words, words to notice. Two important words for the word faith. Faith, number one, is called pistos, a Greek word as to win over, to win over, pistos, of faith to believe or to trust, to have the insurance in someone or something. It is to come and to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, God deals or gives to every man the measure of faith. Pistos, pistos. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, it simply says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. The second word for faith is pistis. Is it pistos? Now, pitch this, which is the faith to follow Christ, a faith to practice the Christian system or doctrine, its beliefs, and its lifestyle. In Jude's epistle, Jude chapter 1 and verse 3, he said, It was needful for me to write unto you and to exalt you that ye should earnestly contend or fight for the faith pistis or doctrine which was once delivered or taught to the saints. Don't expose yourselves, your ears, your time to misunderstood radical teachers. We need the doctrine or teach him that's free from flaws and errors. The new converts at the church there had 
love towards each other, but they were defective both in the knowledge of God, God's word, and in the practices of his precepts. His word is vitally important. Yes, the hearing of it, pistis, and then the practice of it, pistis. Repeat that again. Yes, the hearing of it, pistos, and then the practice of it, pistis. It was Job who said, I have esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. To exceed, to esteem is to hide. It means to conceal. To esteem is to treasure, to lay up. To esteem is to keep in a secret place. David said thy word have I hid in my heart. That's a secret place to hide it in you. That we have it. Hear me because there is still among the churches today so much erroneous teaching and theologian with incorrect information to confuse the people. The church at the church at the Thessalonica was thrown into a state of wild excitement based on a false prediction of an immediate return of Jesus Christ. They were misinformed. They were became impatient and fanatical. They had that has happened and will happen until we get a hold on to sound doctrine. History says Jesus had left only 20 years from the world. The scriptures gives us charity. I'm sorry. The scriptures give us clarity and assurance. Jesus Christ himself yet says in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 26, but of that day and hour, no, no with no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. He knows the return of Jesus Christ. The church at the Tonarica, the men there became, uh, there because of false information, stopped working and began to live useless, unproductive lives. It's like when Luke wrote to the men of Galilee, his disciples, two men, two men appeared unto them in white apparel, said unto them, Why stand ye here gazing, gazing, embryo, embryo, to look directly or at upon his ascension? They could not stay in that position nor place. We are to occupy till he comes. Let me repeat that again because it's very important uh, that we hear this. The church at Thessalonica, the men there, be, be, because of false information, stopped working and began to live useless, unproductive lives. It's like when Luke wrote to the men of Galilee, his disciples, and he speaks about two men or angels appeared unto them in white apparel, who said, Why stand ye, ye gazing up in Lipo to look directly at or upon his ascension? They saw him going up. They could not stay in that position nor place. We are as a people to occupy till Jesus returns. Yes. Uh, the angel said in Acts 1.11, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And so, and so Paul writes, the church at 
the Thunulaika and said that ye, that ye be not soon shaken in mind. Shaken as to be shaken up. Shaken being swayed or agitated. Unsettled. Move. Mark the foundation and the word of God. We must look. We must take a firm stand and hold on. This too will pass as serious even as this virus is. It's only a temporary situation. There are times and seasons the church and the world will experience. For God's people, this is, as someone said, this is not our first rodeo, and will not be our last. Whatever hits the world naturally, hits the church both naturally and spiritually, because we have both Jesus and his word. We have both Jesus and his word. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19 says, Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, which is both sure and steadfast. Whatever we have to go through, whatever we have to encounter in life, Jesus said in St. John chapter 16 and verse 33, in the world you have tribulation, which is troubles, and there is trouble everywhere, but contrary to, in spite of, in me you have peace, and become, and become, as in design, an unshakable church. In a un, in a shakable time, we must be an unshakable church. In a shakable time, the Lord Jesus Christ, lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. We must get the assurance based on no what's going on even in our world. Uh, the media, the news, the telecasts, oh God, it seems as though they are heightened right now. This virus condition, but we have to have the assurance that God is with us to take us through these days. It's only a season. It's only a season. The Bible lets us know about the times and seasons. But God is able to make us steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. The Lord allows things like this. He allows crises and situations and plagues that we're going through. My God, but God is yet in charge. God is yet in control. We have to know it and put our confidence and our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads? Just where you're sitting because he's among us right now to speak to us and to assure us. I hear the Lord said, uh, be not afraid for I am with you. Be not afraid for I am the Lord thy God that heals all of thy diseases, and those who are watching us, uh, my God, know of the fact that this is only a season. Don't lose your faith in God. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your place in God. Don't get nervous. Don't be so soon shaken based on conditions. This is not nothing new to us. We have gone through things in the past, but know that God will help us and bring us to the season yet we're going through. I mean the, I mean the church as well as the world is looking in for hope. Jesus Christ is our hope. He is as an anchor of our soul. I'm so being encouraged, my brother and my sister. The Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge and our strength. He is a present help in the time of trouble. And so, God, we pray, even now for the people, even now, even in the pews, those at home, 
confined to their home. We pray that, God, you would speak to them. Let the words that they heard today be spirit and light to them. We ask this even in your darling son's name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. What a powerful word of God by our founder and our pastor, Apostle Frederick J. Wilson. Listen, be encouraged, and I invite you to follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook under Greater Faith Worship Center, and we hope to see you next week. God bless.